Yes, today is finally the day when I reveal the life essence behind my aviator fara, the electronics. If you were to go to the Wikipedia page on scope creep, you would probably find me somewhere in there with the wings behind me. <laughs> Farah started out as a much smaller electronics project, but as I kept adding upgrades and features, I've learned so much building up towards this, for now, final version, that I want to share this knowledge with you guys today. I say for now final version because I already have some upgrades in the works, so stick around to the end of the video if you want to see some pretty crazy upgrades that I also want to announce and reveal. But yeah, I learned a bunch and I focused on making the electronics as upgradable and as modular as possible, meaning that I pre-allocated some space for future features as well as pre-ran wires. On top of that, there's also a bunch of quality of life improvements that I think any electronics project could benefit from, so I hope you get inspired by those two. I might produce something like these for sale in the future for others, so my mindset was that this should be completely painless both to use and maintain by even a non-technical person. So with that in mind, here are some features of my Ferris electronics. Fully modular electronics. If something fails, it should not take a soldering iron and a workshop full of tools to fix. A malfunction should be treatable like a flat tire and not open heart surgery. The majority of electrical components are contained in this. It's not only a box that contains the electronics, but also is a structural part. There are two compartments or floors. One contains the motor drivers and voltage regulators, and the other contains the main microcontroller and connectors for all the wire harnesses. And each kind of plug is different size on purpose, so you can connect them wrong. If one component breaks, you can just unplug it. The wires that you unplug have their own space in these keyhole shaped slots, which brings us to wire management. One of the biggest boner kills in DIY electronics is messy wiring. Like, not only does it look bad, sometimes it's outright dangerous. The wings are moving fast, and I didn't want to get stuff cut or pinched, so I designed cable routes for everything. It starts with the keyholes in the box that split up the wiring harnesses, and then the cables spread to the appropriate locations. The shoulder armor connectors, thigh armor connector, remote control interface, and the power button. Oh yeah, and the jetpack LEDs, of course. Of course, all the harnesses are color-coded and also documented in Fritzing. Digital design reference. Uh, speaking of color coding, this is more of a feature of my workflow rather than the design itself, but this is really important if you don't want to pull your hair out while troubleshooting. I made a standalone video for fritzing a while back already, but essentially um, it's just so nice to have a visual reference for all the electronics you have in front of you, so when eventually something goes wrong, you have a better idea of what could go wrong. If I were to produce these as a product for sale, I would probably get the circuit boards printed professionally, but since all the traces here are done by hand, so even more a reason for me to document everything. Chip on board LED animations. The LEDs that I used in Farajets are similar to the ones that I used for my Mercy Wings, which are not programmable per se. But with a high-powered MOSFET and some Arduino magic, I managed to get some basic animations. I made them have this idle rumble flicker effect when they're idling, and then a full power jet roaring effect when the wings are extended, with a fade up and fade down transition in between. Battery monitoring. I'm using a LiPo pack to power everything because they're so energy dense and powerful, but when you drain them too low, some irreversible changes occur in the battery, leaving you with a battery that's essentially unchargeable. So best case scenario, you're left with a dead expensive battery, and worst case scenario, you're left with a burning house. Leave a thumbs up if you like your electronics fire free like me. So to prevent this from happening, battery management systems are used. Um, everything from a cordless drill to a laptop or anything rechargeable really have these safeguards. They just cut the power at a safe level, preventing any further depletion. However, all the BMS boards that I tried somehow were bottlenecking the battery to the point where the motors did not get enough current to lift up the wings anymore. So to get these massive wings moving as fast as they are, I'm powering the motors directly without bottlenecks, but to maintain safety, the battery is still being monitored. Uh, once the voltage dips below a certain level, with a generous safety margin of course, the wingtip LEDs change color, indicating that it's time to change the battery. RGB LED animation. Yep, this makes it officially a gamer cosplay. In the game, Aviator Fire's wingtips are kinda yellowish-orange depending on situation, so I could have used dumb LED strips, but due to the way I'm indicating the battery power level, I needed these to be able to change colors, hence addressable RGB. This was actually quite a programming challenge, because the same Arduino is doing so much already, like the motor control, jet LED animations, battery monitoring, to have this new feature of changing the wingtips from yellow to orange to purple when the battery change is needed without messing up everything else, that was quite tricky. <laughs> so now Faro wingtips have this yellow-orange breathing effect, and then they switch to purple when the battery needs changing. 
controls. Uh, to control all the features of the armor, I built a little remote. I wanted it to match everything else, so I 3D printed this in resin. And I'm really happy with icons too. There is a button to trigger the wings, the thigh, and the shoulder armor. It's quite simple, but that's on purpose. You know, less things to break. <laughs> it connects to this garden hose of an extension cable in the wrist armor using aviation plugs. This cable supports way more inputs than are currently used. So you remember that I spoke about upgrades and stuff in the future? Well, those upgrades will need some way of controlling them. So we need extra wiring. And so now I hope you have a better understanding of what makes this crazy project come alive. At the moment, behind the scenes, I'm actually working on another set of ferro wings, something that is my complete own design that I call the jump jet or jetpack configuration. Uh, these are wing surfaces that we'll be mounting on the same mechanism that I already made, uh, but a bit more smaller, so a bit more travel friendly, international travel friendly. Um, I want to take this abroad, so uh, suitcases and all that. Uh, they will not be as impressive in sheer size as the originals, but they have some other tricks up their sleeve that will make them equally or even more impressive than the originals. So pretty stoked about that. I already have a bunch of parts and prototypes figured out and I'm quite far ahead in the process actually. Uh, so yeah, can't wait to work more on that and hopefully blow you away in the next video. Uh, so yes, do the thing with the buttons and everything and uh, thank you for watching and I'll see you next time. Mm. <laughs> wow, what a great video, I agree. If you would like to see more of my stuff, I made a lot of videos over the years, so here's a few links for you to click on. Ooh, editing, editing, editing. <laughs>